Hello and welcome. How are you? I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And in the news, the big story for me was a rural beach in El Salvador called Bitcoin Beach. The locals use Bitcoin to get essentials like groceries. And in this image, you can see here a pickup truck with Bitcoin pay here. And he's got fruits and vegetables all throughout his little pickup truck. And he's, he's buying and selling his fruits and vegetables uh, using Bitcoin. So I thought this was very interesting. In today's video, we're going to talk about three different articles. The first one is about stacking sats. Small Bitcoin holders are on the rise, data suggests. Then we're going to take a look at coronavirus crisis could turn Bitcoin's greatest test into its perfect storm. And then the last article we're going to look at is the one I just mentioned. It's about a rural beach in El Salvador called Bitcoin Beach. The locals use Bitcoin to get essentials like groceries. So this will be a great video. I think this is a fantastic use case of Bitcoin. And so let's get right into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us to promote and let other, others know about the channel because the Google and YouTube algorithms love it when you like, uh, smash the like button. I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So if you're going to invest in Bitcoin, understand that it carries substantial risk of loss. Read the rest of this uh, disclaimer before you make any investments in cryptocurrency because you need to understand the risk that you're taking. Now, Bitcoin at this moment, it's currently 6.29 a.m. Central Standard Time on April 29th, 2020. And the price of Bitcoin is $8,156.18. That's a 5% increase in the last 24 hours. <coughs> and so... If you look at the Bitcoin chart in the last 24 hours, it's taken a very nice steady climb up and it finally broke through the $8,000 price range and has actually taken a little bit of a bump above it. So I'm, I'm hoping, not sure if it will actually happen, but I'm hoping that Bitcoin will not only maintain that $8,000 price, but continue to go up. Time will tell. We'll know later in the day or even later in the week. So who's out there that's been stacking sats? And if you don't know what we mean by a sats, we're going to get into that. So new data supports the assertion that small Bitcoin investors are multiplying rapidly. And anecdotal evidence suggests that much of the growth is taking place in the United States. The number of network addresses holding less than 0.1 Bitcoin has continued to hit new all-time highs climbing to 3,010,784 addresses on the Bitcoin blockchain on Monday, according to data from Glassnode. At the time of the publication, 0.1 Bitcoin is worth 770 US dollars. And so the bottom line is, is that there's a lot of small people who are making small investments, investments that are $770 or less. You know, they might be buying $5 of Bitcoin or $50 of Bitcoin or $100 of Bitcoin. But the number of addresses that are holding less than $770 of Bitcoin has been skyrocketing. If you take a look at this chart, let me see if I can get this a little bit more centered. You can see from December until now, the number of addresses has just been on a steady increase. And it's increased from, this is 2.7 million, and we're now over 3 million. So we've seen an increase of about 30%. Um, no, it's not that much. It's not that much. 
but we have seen a decent increase in the number of people who are uh, holding less than $770 worth of Bitcoin. The addresses began to increase exponentially around Friday, mid-February, I'm sorry, mid-February, coinciding with the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell's suggestion to lawmakers that central banks lacked sufficient firepower to fight the next recession. But several U.S. Bitcoin investment services corroborated the idea that a number of small Bitcoin investors is growing at an increased rate. Swan Bitcoin, a Bitcoin investment service based in Los Angeles that launched in the middle of the COVID-19 panic, has been on, seen a strong uptake in customers who save over $300 per month in Bitcoin on average, with some measuring well into the thousands, said Jan Pritzker, its co-founder and chief operating, chief technical officer. Recently, a number of Swan customers started raising their Bitcoin purchase plans. And so people are, are increasing the amount of Bitcoin that they're purchasing and they're doing it as dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging simply means that they're buying a certain amount of Bitcoin on a regular basis. So they might be buying it once a day, once a week, once a month, once every three months, but it's on a regular basis and it's a fixed amount. Now, those people sound like they're actually increasing the fixed amount of Bitcoin that they're purchasing. So that's really a bullish sign. In Bitcoin parlance, the users are stacking sats. Stacking sats. A sat or Satoshi is the smallest unit of currency recorded on the blockchain. So a single sat, if you can see the screen here, is uh, eight decimals long and it's just one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin or, or said simply 0.00000001. Uh, bitcoins. And it takes about 150 sats to equal one U.S. penny. And so when you're, when you're buying $300 a month, you're buying thousands or hundreds of thousands of sats. I'd actually have to do the math to figure it out. And I haven't done it. I didn't think about it prior to starting the video. Didn't think about it until just now. How many sats is $700 or $300 or something similar to that? So River Financial, a Bitcoin brokerage firm based in San Francisco, has seen significant growth in customers buying hundreds to a couple of thousands dollars of worth of Bitcoin, said Alexander Leishman, its founder and CEO. The number of orders on our platform doubled in mid-March, and it has since sustained a significantly elevated rate, he said. Many of our clients have directly told me that they are buying Bitcoin because the government is printing so much money. A lot of these people are buying Bitcoin for the first time. Also, in regards to stimulus spending, Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, shared a cryptic chart earlier in April indicating a spike in the number of Coinbase customers who deposited and executed buy orders for $1,200, the same amount in stimulus checks sent by the Eternal Revenue Service to middle and lower income adults. If you've watched, I, I did an article a couple of weeks ago on this very subject about, and I called it the Bitcoin stimulus checks because people were taking their government issued stimulus checks and buying Bitcoin with it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Coinbase is the largest US based cryptocurrency exchange by traded volume, according to the data aggregator CoinGecko. And you can see by this chart, here's the number of people depositing $1,200 and it kind of meanders along until all of a sudden, whoop, it just skyrockets. Um, and so, and this is, a, this is the time when the stimulus checks actually got released is when that thing peaked. When Armstrong tweeted the Coinbase customer data, $1,200 was worth roughly 0.17 Bitcoin. I'm not surprised that the increase in small purchases of Bitcoin over the last few months, said Anil Lula, a former associate of Douche Bank and co-founder of Delphi Digital, a digital assets research firm. It's important to note some of these people wrote off Bitcoin in the past 
and have started to be intrigued given the macro backdrop. And so, you know, um, in the previous all-time high, the big driver for getting to $20,000 per Bitcoin in December of 2017, that was driven by small investors. It wasn't driven by whales. And we're seeing the potential of the same thing happening all over again. And so in this video, we're going to kind of concentrate on the small investor, the people who are investing $50, $100, $500, or even $1,200 stimulus checks. And when you look at, in fact, let's drill into this for just a second. So we're going to look at the Bitcoin price chart. It's taking a second here to draw it. Let's... There it goes. All right, so here's the Bitcoin price chart. This goes back several years, but let's look at the seven day version of it real quickly here. And it should come up any moment now. All right, so in the seven day version of it, you can see we had a nice peak or a nice sudden jump. Sudden jumps I'm cautious of because typically they're either they're caused by a, a specific event somebody like a whale who comes in and just plops down a whole bunch of money and buys a bunch of bitcoin or sells a bunch of bitcoin can cause a sudden rise like this another thing that can cause a sudden rise is that we can see a cascading effect of people who have leveraged accounts all of a sudden getting uh, liquidated and so there were about $10 million worth of leveraged accounts that got liquidated during this pump up. And as one account gets liquidated, it can cause another account that gets liquidated, causing kind of a domino effect. And that domino effect can take over for a period of time. And so this was probably caused by a couple of things. One, somebody buying a whole bunch of Bitcoin, and then that started the domino effect of liquidating uh, leveraged accounts but this growth here that you can kind of see is of a smaller on a consistent regular basis and so these are smaller moves as it moved up and these are more likely to have been driven by retail investors they could also be big whales who are just buying in very small increments over a longer period of time um, so it, it, the bottom line is, is that these are smaller increments of, of purchases that is pushing the price up. Um, so anyway, let's get on to the next one. Coronavirus crisis could turn Bitcoin's greatest test into its perfect storm. As, my, as much as many say Bitcoin is uncorrelated, even the crypto industry hasn't been spared in the recent outbreak of COVID-19. Like a majority of other asset classes, cryptocurrency tanked on Black Thursday, experiencing their worst crash in years. And like most other industries, a number of leading firms laid off staff in the crypto space over the past few weeks. With the president in mind, it may be easiest, easy to suggest that should the economy continue to tumble, so too should crypto and the price of Bitcoin. But according to a growing number of investors and analysts, the fundamentals of cryptocurrencies are only being strengthened by the crisis. And so it's always a good thing when you see the fundamentals get strengthened because the fundamentals are what drives the long-term value. And then it's emotions that drive value in the short term. So fear and greed can force a stock to rise above its uh, uh, fundamental value, the value based on what what is the building blocks behind that cryptocurrency, or fear can drive that value down, um, even though it may be worth more than the actual price. And that's kind of how you want to want to make you know you make profit in the market by buying low and selling high, and so you're looking for assets that have been pushed down in their values below what their fundamentals uh, offer as a value and, and then try and sell when emotion has pushed it above what it's really valued at. Um, and then once you've sold it that high, wait for it to come back down, etc. And so it's kind of a cycle. The company explained that with fiat system being pushed to extremes, negative interest rates and money printing galore is the epitome of this. There's potential for inflation to rise at a rapid clip 
for central banks to fail, and for trust in alternative monies to grow. And so the key, uh, the big boy as far as alternative monies is Bitcoin, but really every cryptocurrency out there has the potential to grow just because of everything happening in the standard you know, finance 1.0 as a lot of people like to call it. Um, but, you know, the traditional monetary system. This confidence of monetary and geopolitical factors is like a perfect storm that is likely to benefit Bitcoin. Another report for Arcane Research has suggested. It goes further than that. Placeholders, cap, placeholder capitals, Chris Bern, Bernisk, went as far to say that the entire crypto space, not just Bitcoin, could benefit from the socioeconomic effects of the outbreak. And so I would have to agree with that, but here's the main reason why I agree with that. When you look at Coin360 and you see everything is in the green, it's because Bitcoin is going up. And whenever Bitcoin is you know, flatlining, it's basically just going straight across. You'll find a lot of red and green throughout all of the rest of the cryptocurrency market. And when Bitcoin is taking a dive and it's tanking, everything will be in the red or close to everything, I should say. And so when Bitcoin is doing well, the rest of the cryptocurrency market does well. And oftentimes when you see Bitcoin going up by one amount, you'll see other cryptocurrencies going up by significantly more than Bitcoin. Now, right now, that's not the case. You know, you can see that Bitcoin is in a darker green, meaning it's got a higher percentage uh, growth over the last 24 hours. But there's a lot over here that's still in the light green. And so uh, when we see the entire cryptocurrency moving, we're going to see it the same shade of Bitcoin or uh, darker than Bitcoin. Now, we do see everything moving in a positive direction, but I definitely like to see it when the other altcoins are moving faster and higher than Bitcoin. But you know, that's kind of a ebb and flow, you know, sometimes they're doing better, sometimes Bitcoin is doing better. And so all of those things are subject to change and can change with a moment's notice. Anyway, so that's the news as far as real world Bitcoin transactions in up. Oh, that's not what I wanted to get into quite yet. I thought I was finishing this article. And so the perfect storm may actually be happening because of the economic and global and political situation that's happening around the world. Only time will tell. Um, but, you know, this is my opinion and I'm sharing my opinion with, the, with you. It's not financial advice, but I think this definitely has a lot of potential, especially to help the smaller investor and not just the people who are rich and wealthy. So Bitcoin is replacing the El Salvador economy for the unbanked. Bitcoin was created to become a monetary system that exists outside of the control of third parties such as governments and banks. It's also a solution for unbanked individuals to hold an account that stores value and can transfer that value to others on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. And so this is the article where we're going to look at this El Salvadoring beach that's called Bitcoin Beach and, and kind of dig deeper into it. And while this is a long-term vision for the first ever cryptocurrency, in a rural village in El Salvador, Bitcoin is already replacing the hard-hit economy and providing a much-needed solution for unbanked citizens residing in the area along the coast called Bitcoin Beach. It's the cash-strapped regions where unbanked citizens are commonplace that are left without a monetary system they can rely on. In a rural beach located along the coast of the South, South American nation El Salvador exists a village now dubbed Bitcoin Beach, where the locals are relying almost solely on Bitcoin to transact and get essentials like groceries. Real-world Bitcoin transactions in mobile store uh, take about 15 seconds, quicker than cash by the time you give your change, and definitely quicker than credit cards. Rural village in El Salvador selling out of a van to people banks don't want to serve. Forget buying coffee with Bitcoin. This is real. 
Locals prefer Bitcoin for its speed, but it's also necessary as many people in the area don't have access to traditional banking solutions. And so I need to take a second here and make sure that I turn this on so that you can actually hear the audio. Um, let's go back here. And I wanted to show you this. So you can see pictures of people traveling. Here's, here they are using their phones and they're buying eggs and drinks and other things. Um, and so let's turn the audio on. <laughs> okay. And then here's another one where somebody's buying eggs. <laughs> And then you can see they're setting up their Bitcoin truck. And look at that line. Such a line of people waiting to buy goods. Pretty remarkable. And then down here, this guy gives us a little bit more. Guys, info. we're here right now, part of the Bitcoin project. Here's people lining up behind us uh, using Bitcoin to buy both fresh vegetables and uh, dry goods and canned goods from the store here. Uh, we have about 350 families in El Vante right now that we are giving worth, uh, weekly disbursements of Bitcoin that they're able to use to, to provide for their families' needs. And because these families, none of them can work right now, uh, without this, uh, a lot of them would be going hungry. So we're just very thankful that we're able to be a part of this. Okay, guys. So anyway, I thought that was a great story especially where I, I don't know where they're getting the Bitcoin, but that they're giving about $300, $350 of Bitcoin per family um, so that people can actually buy groceries and stuff. Uh, quite, the, quite a good deed that these guys are doing. Um, I was glad to see it. And to me, that's the top story of the day. So tell me, how can I be of service to you? Do you have questions, thoughts, or comments on what I've said today? Do you disagree with anything that I cover? Look, I'd love to hear your polite disagreements. You know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know with each other, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So share your polite disagreements in the comment section on the YouTube channel. And we're going to grow smarter together. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl, and do me a favor, have a fantastic day.